According to our inquiries, Russell Cox moved effortlessly across state borders, from far north Queensland to northern New South Wales, and regularly down to Melbourne, remaining one step ahead of the police. Always brazen, Cox was rumoured to have registered for the dole and may have received unemployment benefits for at least part of his decade on the run. It's very, very cheeky behaviour, but um, I, I understand that Cox was able to apply for successfully unemployment benefits. This was a time when government departments weren't as keen to share information. So while it's unlikely that Cox was putting in tax returns, um, it's very likely that he was getting the dog. For all his notoriety, few people knew what Cox actually looked like. The newspapers across Australia published his photo on their front pages, but these mugshots bore little resemblance to his appearance while on the run. Russell Cox was a master of disguise. physically striking about him to start with uh, but he's also been able to change that fairly ordinary appearance sometimes just with base, basic things like different haircuts different facial hair spectacles there's also evidence though that he he did spend some time studying or learning the art of disguise you look at some of the material that was found at mount martha after he shot Ian Carroll and that would suggest that he, he did spend some time uh, preparing disguises. The only time that I've seen Russell Cox in the flesh uh, was sitting in the dock in the courtroom and when you look at uh, some of his photographs and some of the identity kits and, and what other people have uh, told us, he had a remarkable ability, like Jockey Smith, to change his appearance uh, by dyeing his hair, wigs, moustaches, gain weight, lose weight, that sort of thing. It's an overused phrase, master of disguise, but it does seem appropriate when used to refer to Cox. To stay unrecognised for 11 years on the run is pretty extraordinary. According to forensic psychologist Bob Montgomery, Cox's ability to disguise himself shows the strength of his personality. Yeah, he's not changing his persona. He's showing you how clever he is. Uh, look at me. I can walk past the coppers. Uh, uh, I can thumb my nose and I can be right under their nose. And I'm so clever at disguising who I am. Uh, they won't see me. They won't catch me. So it, it's really reinforcing that grandiosity element of his personality. That's constant. And it's just, look how successful I am at tricking people and escaping. You know, if you talk to women, they put make up on that they, they change the way they look it doesn't diminish their identity it gives them more options I mean much the same way disguises will do the same thing for him it gives him options about who he is but I wouldn't imagine that it alters very much his, his, his core sense of self his core sense of self may be I'm successful in eluding capture this is how I do it and so it promotes his identity rather than um, dot diluting it. As a master of disguise, Russell Cox could blend into any suburb or any country town. When we return, Cox engages in a fight to the death with one of his criminal accomplices. He's a master of disguise. So they say here. He could be right under the copper's nose and they wouldn't know. Well, some of those coppers aren't too bright. Welcome back to Tough Nuts, Australia's hardest criminals, and Russell Cox, Australia's most wanted man. As much as a man on the run can be said to settle down, Cox found a home life with his partner, Helen Dean. 
Cox and Dean set up their hideout in Plain View, a suburban home in Mount Martha in Melbourne South. The home was owned by Melbourne armed robber Ian Carroll. The environment was safer for Cox. In Sydney, criminals and police frequently met and did business. But in Melbourne, the battle lines were hard drawn between the crooks and the cops. Cox used Melbourne's criminal elite to assist in his armed robberies. His lover, Dean, was sister-in-law to notorious criminal Ray Chuck Bennett. And Bennett was happy to introduce Cox around to his fellow armed robbers, including Ian Carroll. Carol and Cox had a spectacular falling out in the Mount Martha hideout. Shots were fired by both men. Cox sustained a bullet wound to his thigh, but Carol was less fortunate. He was shot twice and died. Ian Revel Carroll was one of the most... Uh, the, one of the busiest armed robbers in Melbourne. He was into everything that happened in shut. He uh, had a ton of dash. January 1983, Cox turns up at Mount Martha at a house occupied by Ian Carroll, former uh, great bookie robber and a uh, very serious crim. It, it appears that that house was, and it's a fairly plain suburban home, but was being used as a hideout um, by Cox. They were probably two of the, uh, the best armed robbers and uh, best planners of armed robberies that uh, we've seen for a long time. They become involved in an argument which leads to gunfire. Both of them are shot. Cox shoots Carol dead. Russell Cox made headlines in 1977 by becoming the only man ever to escape from the supposedly escape-proof Katingal High Security Unit at Long Bay Jail. He's wanted for questioning about the murder in January of Melbourne painter and docker Ian Carroll at this house in Mount Martha on the Mornington Peninsula. A large cache of weapons was found at the house, one of the biggest illegal gun hauls ever made in Victoria. Police who've searched that property, as well as finding Carroll's body, have found everything that a busy arm robber could possibly need. In the ceiling was this uh, virtually uh, cabin trunk just full of equipment, just in case they did march on Moscow and things went crook. Handguns, shotguns, assault rifles, submachine guns, balaclavas, boiler suits, security guard uniforms, safes presumably to practice on, lifts of police radio frequencies, printed matter uh, about disguises, wig making, theatrical cosmetics. Uh, uh, a veritable uh, bunnings for bank robbers. After his recapture, Russell Cox was charged with the murder of Ian Carroll, but the charge didn't even make it past committal proceedings and was dismissed. There wasn't any evidence to substantiate putting him on trial for murder. Police believe that Cox's lover, Helen Dean, used her nursing skills to save Cox's life after he was shot by Carroll possibly removing the bullet in the house in Mount Martha. Ah, oh, jeez. Oh, fucking prick Carol. After everything I've done for him, and he pulls a fucking gun on me. I'm just gonna have to bite the bullet, aren't I? You have to get it out first. Stay still. Just hurry up. All right. registered nurse and they had a cabin trunk full of equipment for anybody that was shot, stabbed, bashed or any uh, physical violence on them. They could have been treated. There was uh, injections, hypodermic syringes and everything. A complete set of uh, almost a walk around hospital kit there. Helen Dean was a trained nurse and was apparently um, able to go above and beyond those skills, removing the bullet in Cox's leg uh, and providing...
providing him with all of the, the treatment he he needed. Um, apparently, he was up and literally running the next day. After the shootout with Ian Carroll, Nurse Dean tended to Cox's wounds. Cox didn't waste time recuperating. Within a day of being shot, he returned to his regular morning jog, again in plain sight. In Melbourne, Russell Cox was able to blend in. People saw him jogging the streets, yet they had no idea the person they were looking at was Australia's most wanted man. Just a cappuccino, thanks, Maka. What? Cappuccino, thanks, man. Ah. Look here, Jimmy. What about this Cox block, eh? Who's that? You haven't heard. Russell Cox, the mad dog. <laughs> Coppers haven't got a clue. He's been running now for seven years. Ever since he uh, escaped from that slammer in Sydney. No, I, I don't know, Macca. What slammer? The tingle in Sydney. <laughs> they build this jail that you can't break out of, and he breaks out. Unbelievable. How'd he do it? Well, nobody knows. But he did it. 